Hey folks, welcome to MoGraphLots.com. It's Khazir here with you and we're going to be having a totally free and very cool and awesome tutorial. Uh, it's going to be a rendering tutorial. We're going to be taking a, a scene and go through everything and create a cool uh, render out of it. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, we're going to be using V-Ray for Cinema 4D as our rendering engine. Uh, and uh, I might follow up this tutorial with another tutorial which we're going to be covering the same render but uh, using the Cinema 4D's physical render but this one is going to be a uh, pure very 4 C4D render so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and uh, get through our lighting first of all uh, as you can see there is no material applied to maybe uh, let's actually go and uh, take a look at our scene uh, so uh, let me go ahead and here is this, uh, let's me just, we got this uh, kind of uh, wood base here, this kind of uh, wood planks that we're going to be using it as our base. And then we have this uh, sort of mug, uh, take a look at, uh, and in this mug we have some sort of uh, simulations. I have two different simulations, one of them is here, and uh, the other one is this one, so... Uh, if I take a look here there we go and it really depends I can go ahead and increase my timeline to show you this seems a bit better so let's go through and here is uh, another one of them and and here is the next one uh, both of simulation are kind of dirty simulation that I did inside real flow and really the whole thing took about uh, 30 40 minutes uh, design and uh, simulation and uh, meshing uh, which is kind of uh, dirty as I said but I just wanted to get something into Cinema 4D as a liquid base and apply some nice material into it so these are not totally legit liquids we can say but uh, definitely we can use them and uh, we have these two version and we can go through and uh, check out uh, which one we want to use and also I have this uh, simple uh, camera uh, which uh, you can see is a very simple camera and I'm going to be using it. So let's go ahead and first of all uh, use V-Ray as our render engine. I'm going to my indirect illumination and turn on GI. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to be using this uh, classic uh, Eridian Map Light Cache Kais group setup. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and reduce some of the settings. I'm going to change my subdivision uh, in my light cache to about 500 so everything goes a bit faster. And for my irradiance map, I'm going to reduce my max rate to something like negative 2 and my minimum rate to something like negative 4. I'm going to increase some of my AO stuff and cool stuff. Great. Let's go ahead uh, to our anti-aliasing. I'm going to reduce my maximum subdivision in my adaptive DMC image sampler to something like 12 or 8, just to uh, kind of speed things up. And yeah, that's going to be cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and start the lighting process here. I'm going to create a light. And this is going to be our dome sort of environment light. So that's going to be our dome light. And let's go ahead and apply a V-Ray bridge tag and V-Ray light tag. We're going to be using an area light and we're going to be change the area light tab to a dome light. And we're going to go ahead and turn on the spherical dome and the use texture. And uh, here I'm going to be using an, a commercial HDRI. You can go ahead and search for HDRI in your Cinema 4D's content browser or use whatever HDRI you have. I have this kind of nice uh, backyard garden uh, HDRI that I'm going to be using it. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to be using this HDRI so let's go ahead and uh, open it up and uh, kind of this is what we got here so take open it this is what we have okay and you can use your own HDRI or whatever HDRI kind of exterior HDRI that you have uh, I, I'm not going to be able to provide this for you so let's go ahead and change the color profile to sRGB uh, and 
Uh, first of all, I'm not going to be telling you why I'm, for example, changing the color RGB and uh, color profile to sRGB or why I uh, change the color mapping to this or that or why I use this global illumination method or why not because uh, with this uh, some a free tutorial uh, about V-Ray which we can explain this stuff and we have a very comprehensive course, uh, comprehensive introduction to V-Ray 4C for the atmographloss.com which we go over everything in V-Ray 4C for the quite in, in quite a lot of detail. So you can go ahead and uh, kind of find out uh, why uh, we do this sort of stuff uh, this way. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, make sure our lights, select the light tag and enable the shadow. I'm also going to add a camera tag, physical camera tag to my camera. And let's go through. I'm going to make sure that my white balance is neutral. And I'm going to increase my film ISO to something like um, I don't know, maybe 800 and decrease my shutter speed to 50 just to get a brighter scene. So let's go ahead and um, render it out and see what we can do. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, our render by default and uh, I'm going to kind of maybe rotate this HDRI until it kind of looks like uh, uh, it's kind of gets closer to what I want. But the first thing I'm going to do is to actually increase the intensity of this light to something like 2. And let's go to our uh, plugin V-Ray Bridge and add a V-Ray Dome Light Texture View. And let's go kind of increase this water to something like 1. 1024 and make sure you select the light here and preview the texture and now you can go ahead and simply kind of if you want to rotate it uh, but you know we kind of just uh, see the grasses here on uh, we can go ahead and move our camera if we wanted to really if I go or we can get crazy about these HD this is dome light so you can go ahead and rotate it this way and you're just uh, gonna stay with this horizontal sort of rotation uh, uh, but we can go ahead and actually uh, if I take a look at the camera you can go ahead and rotate it until I see some nice cool stuff if I wanted to maybe this is nice uh, some nice people are having fun here so but I'm gonna go ahead and actually undo the view for the moment until we kind of get everything done. We can go ahead and then uh, so let's go ahead and quickly undo the view until we back to where we were. Perfect. So that's enough for the moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue here. Uh, just have the camera there and let's go ahead and uh, have another render and see what you're gonna get. Now I'm going to add the sunlight. Uh, as you can see, the direction of the shadow. This shadow has been produced by our V-Ray dome light, and it's cool that we get this really nice sh uh, sharp shadows using our dome light. If we use the same texture in our environment uh, slot down here in our V-Ray setting, it wouldn't uh, give us this sort of sharp, nice shadows. But because we are using the dome light, definitely, even though we're gonna have some noise in our render, as you can see, these small noises. But uh, shadows are uh, sort of much more sharper and much more closer to what uh, we want. Uh, just in order to have uh, some highlights on my liquids, I'm going to add a sunlight and an area light. So let's go ahead and get started by adding a sunlight. So I'm going to this uh, infinite light here and uh, I'm going to kind of uh, go through that infinite light. So set the active object as the camera. And let's go ahead and see where is our infinite light here. So here's our camera and the shadow or something like this. So I think we can go ahead and uh, make this thing to be something like this. So that's our sunlight sort of. So let's go to our uh, default camera here and see what's going on here. Okay, I think that's not too bad. Let's see how that's gonna work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a V-Ray uh, light tag and I'm gonna make sure to turn off the physical sky, get back to my camera and see what I have here. Okay. Obviously it's too bright, so let's go ahead and uh, select this. 
go to this uh, intensity multiplier for physical camera. I'm going to go to something like 10% and see what we are going to get. A bit closer, but I think it's still a bit too much and we get this uh, burnout areas. And also we don't have any shadow on it. That's a big problem. So let's go ahead and turn on the shadows and it will definitely get rid of uh, some of the uh, inner penetration that's going on so uh, that's better but we are still getting this very very burned out areas so what I'm going to do is to uh, go ahead let's see there we go so that's nice just to get rid of the, some of these very burnout out areas I'm gonna go ahead to my color mapping so let's go ahead and open up the color mapping area and I'm gonna change this to uh, a rain heart and at the moment we are basically using the linear multiply because our burn value is one. I'm gonna go ahead and decrease this value to something like 0.3. So we're a bit more closer to the exponential color mapping. And uh, let's see what we're gonna get. Okay. Um, not that better, but it really definitely gonna help us when we add the materials. I'm going to select this light and go there and maybe we can go ahead and increase this value maybe to something like 2-3% and see what's going to get. Okay, definitely it's uh, much more nicer and much more better. So let's go ahead and stick with it uh, for the moment. Okay, so definitely that's a good starting point. Let's go ahead and uh, start maybe working on our camera. Let me go to this my camera and actually go to my physical camera tab. And I'm going to increase the shutter speed to something like 75. Okay, and take a quick render again. And I think uh, we are very close to what we want. And it's definitely it's a good starting point. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start creating the material. Uh, we start by creating the material for this uh, wood base sort of kind of uh, wood planks. We're gonna go ahead and do that in the next part of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new V-Ray material, shader, V-Ray bridge, V-Ray advanced material. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my material editor. Let's go to the diffuse layer number one. I'm going to be using this uh, plank texture, perfect. And let's uh, go ahead, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and apply this thing. And um, I'm going to select that uh, food plant and go to the, uh, make sure its projection is set to be cubic. And that's what we have at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of make it a bit bigger. Okay, something maybe like this. And I'm going to select this guy and go to its coordinates and go to negative 90 on heading, something like that. Let's go ahead and kind of make it bigger. Something like this would possibly be enough. Let's get rid of this texture tag. I think that's going to be uh, nice. So uh, we are having these uh, parallel lines and these planks, basically. So let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the same texture. So click and drag it to your specular layer. And let's go ahead and put it on our texture map. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my specular layer. So let's go ahead and apply a filter shader. I'm going to decrease my saturation and increase the contrast a bit. Uh, something like this. It's going to be possibly enough, maybe a bit too much. Uh, and then I'm going to get out. Uh, this is going to be so blurry, so I'm going to go ahead and decrease my reflection glassiness to something like uh, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.45, something like this. And uh, let's go ahead and copy the same uh, texture map to our bump map also. I'm going to enable my bump map and get inside that filter shader. I'm going to kind of increase uh, the contrast a bit more. So, I don't know, maybe something like this a bit more crazier so we have a bit more obvious uh, bumpiness on our texture so that's good 
So let's go ahead and see what we're going to get uh, and take a quick render here. Okay, as you can see, definitely very close and nice and we have this nice realistic texture. We can go ahead and uh, kind of add a bit more detail and a, add a bit more imperfection to different channels. But I think it's going to be enough to this um, uh, base here. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, the next thing I'm going to be working on the uh, material that we're going to be using for this mock. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the material for our mock. I'm going to first of all uh, hide the mesh that I have here just so we can kind of see the material a bit better and also I'm going to create a duplicate of my camera. I'm going to go through this camera and kind of get a bit closer to my glass here so we can see it a bit better. So let's go ahead and create a new uh, V-Ray advanced material. I'm going to go ahead and see what we can do. I'm going to go ahead and disable the fuse, enable the refraction and the specular. I'm going to my specular layer. The first thing I'm going to make the reflections to be a bit blurry. So let's go ahead to something like maybe uh, 0 0.85, 84, 83, something like this. And then I'm going to my reflection layer. Let's just reduce the, pre the preview quality so things go a bit faster. I'm going to my refraction layer and uh, let's come down here. I'm going to, let's go ahead and expand this window here. And let's go ahead and decrease the glossiness to something like uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.82, 0 0.85, something like that. And then I'm going to my texture maps and let's go ahead and use this black and white texture. I'm going to get inside and um, invert the colors, so 1 and 0. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, reduce the mix strength to something like 0.25. So basically we're using the 25% of this texture and 75% of this glassiness value. Cool stuff. Let's go ahead and basically replace this texture with a layer shader. So let's get in here. I'm going to add an image and this time we're going to be using these scratches to kind of add another layer of imperfection to our texture. I'm going to change the uh, this texture to be multiplied over our original texture. So you can see this way we're going to get this uh, sort of let's so as you can see we kind of have these complex layers and scratches and there it's, it's really helped to uh, make the uh, whole things to uh, come a bit more natural and the material to be a bit more nicer. So let's go ahead and uh, stay with that. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to add is another layer of imperfection using my diffuse layer. So I'm going to go and enable my diffuse layer. I'm going to first of all change the color to something like um, musty sort of uh, colors, maybe something like this not too severe to something like this I think it would be enough uh, it's too much really but uh, it's kind of exaggerated because of the specular that we have I'm going to my diffuse layer transparency and use another texture this time I'm going to be using this fingerprint texture okay so let's go ahead and open it up and I'm going inside here and kind of invert the textures again so but I'm going to reduce the block point to something like 0.7 so we are gonna see the black points a bit better. Uh, I mean, ideally, when you're creating a material, uh, I would never go through everything together. I've created this material before. That's why I'm kind of going a bit fast. And that's a, a very, very heavy material here. And if I go ahead, for example, add this refraction, glossiness, add this texture, take a render, add another layer, add take a render, that would take forever. And I'm just trying to uh, create the material and uh, take a render and see how everything is going. And if there was a problem, we can uh, kind of come back. So here is the diffuse layer. And you can see, uh, if you take a look at the preview, you can see this kind of dirt uh, over our uh, texture that really makes it much more nicer. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to rename this to a glass here. So generally speaking, Vray has a serious problem with uh, basically previewing the textures in viewports. So that's why. Uh, you know, in uh, the case of our wood, it was working just fine. But in this case, we have this kind of complex uh, material and it's not definitely going to work the way we want it to. So what I'm going to be doing is create a simple Cinema 4D material. And I'm going to apply the texture, use a simple Cinema 4D material. Let's go just to use the same 
texture that we had and let's go ahead and apply to our mock and I'm going to kind of change some of the settings uh, first of all change the pro projection to uh, be cubic and I'm going to uh, select this and kind of move it maybe a bit higher and also I'm going to enable my axis tool and kind of scale it down maybe a bit and let's go ahead and move it again a bit higher to something maybe like this that's kind of cool and let's go ahead now we can replace this material with our main material so let's go ahead and do that and that's it let's go ahead and delete this material for the moment and now we can go ahead and test uh, to see whether our material is working the way we want it or not so let's go ahead and take a, a quick render region and definitely it's not going to be quick because it's a complex material so let's go ahead and uh, see how that's going to work First of all, I'm actually going to save the uh, lesson here. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to provide the finished version of this too. So let's go ahead and render origin. And let's see. Okay, guys, as you can see, the render is finished. And definitely, we're having a nice, complex uh, material here. Okay, folks, so let's go ahead and create the material for our liquid. And when we add the material for our mesh, it's going to be a bit more easier to see and to find out whether the material for our mug is good enough or not. So let's get back here. I'm going to uh, create a new uh, very advanced material. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of create a uh, material that uh, uh, basically uh, gives the sense of some viscousy liquid okay so it's going to be very thick and stuff like that so let's go ahead and create that i'm going to my uh refraction layer first of all again we're going to enable the specular layer uh, i'm going to increase the glossiness to something like 0.9 i'm going to enable the volume fog uh, and for the color I'm going to be using this color, as you can see, 2342181.87 or something close. And let's go ahead and turn on the SSS or subsurface scattering for this material. And uh, I'm going to change the transparency color. I don't want the light to kind of penetrate the mesh that much. So I'm going to reduce the volume to something like 80%. So we're basically uh, having a bit more off white color close uh, closer toward the gray uh, range of our colors so i'm going to increase my scatter level to something like 10 so the light will uh, penetrate the mesh a bit more and then i'm going to my specular layer and i'm going to something like 7 8.8 .8, so it's going to be glossy i'm going to my diffuse layer turn it on i'm going to be using this yellow color as my main color and I'm going to reduce the uh, increase the uh, diffuse layer transparency to something like 30%, 35%, something like this, very close. And this is what we're gonna uh, get. So let me close this. Okay, and one more thing I can think of. If I get back to my specular layer, I'm going to uh, um, untick here, link highlight glossiness. I'm going to, I think 0.5 will kind of help us to get rid of the, some of those sharp highlights, generally speaking. So that's good. Um, that's kind of enough. Let's go ahead and actually uh, see how that's going to work out. I'm going to uh, turn off my mug and let's go ahead and enable the mesh that we have here. And let's go ahead and apply this material and see how that's going to uh, work. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, let's see maybe something like here. So let's go ahead and render it and see what we can do. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure the mug is um, not gonna be visible in our render. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, it looks like we have applied it to the wrong object. Let's go ahead and apply it to the particle mesh 03. There we go. Well, let's go ahead and render it and see what you're going to get. Uh, 
uh, we enable the subsurface scattering we don't get any uh, we don't have any nice highlights on our uh, mesh here because we don't have a, a good source for you know reflection and specular so we're going to be adding an area light at this uh, point of our design uh, so let's go ahead and do that okay so let's go ahead and create an area light I'm gonna go ahead and create an area light and let's uh, go to our set active object as camera and let's go ahead and put it somewhere so here is our Sun coming from this way here is our camera maybe we can put it from here so let's go ahead and kind of put it about here something like this I'm going to my project tab and make sure this light is just going to affect our uh, liquid mesh so let's go ahead and uh, uh, make sure to let's select this it's gonna be our area light I'm going to be uh, just including these two particle meshes maybe we we'll use this one or this one so let's go ahead and get back to our camera here I'm going to select this light and that's gonna be our area light and let's change this is gonna be our Sun I'm going to select this light right click very bridge tag and apply a V-ray light tag okay I'm just increasing its intensity so it penetrates the a bit more and it has a bit more power and we need to enable the shadows also for this one and uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we are gonna get this time so let's take a look okay as you can see it's not so bad uh, and uh, you see this change of color sort of uh, kind of uh, this orange colors here here down here that's basically the uh, uh, light inner penetration so what you can do in order to see a bit more of that uh, light going through your mesh is kind of simply uh, if you go uh, come down here and if you increase the amount of your uh, diffuse layer transparency you kind of make this uh, your diffuse a bit more transparent and you're gonna be able to see that in a penetration a bit more better but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with 30% as we had before for our diffuse layer transparency and in order to add a bit more detail we can go ahead and add a layer of displacement to our uh, liquid mesh so let me go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a new V-Ray uh, displacement material let's go ahead and open it up let's go ahead and use I have this texture this displacement map texture let's go ahead and open it I'm going to increase this amount to something like 4 and okay perfect I'm actually going to uh, kind of copy this channel here and create a dummy cinema 4d material just to make sure it's going to be applied uh, let's go ahead and paste this and apply this material to our uh, there we go that's how it's going to be applied and let's see I think just the UV mapping is actually enough uh, as you can see we got some nice detail over it so that's nice so let's go ahead and delete this guy and delete this guy and I'm going to apply this material here let's go ahead just make sure the displacement material is applied before your main material now let's go ahead and see how that's gonna work out and another thing we can do just kinda uh, let's see what we can do go to our area lights let's go ahead and increase this volume maybe something like four or five maybe and let's go ahead and uh, quickly render this thing and see what's gonna get so let's our here let's see okay so as you can see adding the displacement map is going to add a lot of detail to your uh, mesh here and it's really gonna make it much more uh, kind of realistic it's really kind of a fantasy sort of liquid uh, I don't think there is any yellow liquid out there uh, but it's really up to you and how you want to manipulate it but you can see this uh, displacement map kind of really adding a lot uh, and makes the a uh, volume and the liquid to uh, kind of seems so much more uh, thick and heavy and uh, that's really what we want in this case 
and you can go ahead and increase the displacement quality if you want if you go to your uh, material and uh, you can go ahead and turn off this use global parameters and uh, decrease your edge lengths to get a better and higher quality displacement map but I think that's going to be enough just the edge length of 4 at this case and now we can go ahead and see how this is going to work and the next thing we can do is going to maybe uh, if we go ahead and increase this uh, amount of our uh, diffuse layer transparency to something like 45 maybe it will kind of help to um, kind of helps the nature of a liquid you know to seems a bit more like a liquid so that's I think it's gonna be nice now basically we are uh, in a very good position I can go ahead and uh, see whether this is going to be the mesh that we're gonna be using or not I think something like this kind of looks nice and we can definitely uh, take a look at this other mesh that we have here let me go ahead and turn off this one and take a look at this one I don't know which one is nicer this one is a bit uh, better because I actually use the same uh, mesh to uh, in real flow to simulate this but this one was I was using another uh, glass another mug to uh, kinda do the simulation and as you can see it's not quite uh, like the uh, volume of our uh, mug but this one is a bit closer but I think um, I don't know I have the feeling that this the first one the uh, particle mesh 03 is a bit nicer and I'm gonna be using it anyways so let's go ahead and turn off this test and enable this one and let's see what we can do I don't want to get that crazy maybe something like this and I'm going to see maybe something like this kind of isn't too bad let's go ahead and before kind of enabling our mug again I'm going to take another quick render and see what's gonna happen so let's go ahead and take another quick render here okay folks I'm definitely loving this render uh, but uh, I think what we can do is uh, go ahead maybe increase the intensity of our sunlight a bit uh, or if I go to the area light, let me get out this camera here a bit As you can see we got this very small area light uh, we are going to kind of definitely need to make this thing to be a bit bigger so it kind of covers our uh, liquid completely and we're gonna get some nice reflection some better maybe inner, pen inner penetration so let's go ahead and see what we're gonna get with this one and I can go kind of uh, go through it and maybe take it uh, to something like here okay maybe here so let's go to something like this so we are going to have some reflections on this part too so let's get back to the camera and let's go through this and I don't know we have maybe we can go ahead and render this part and I can go ahead and kind of select my mesh and rotate it the way I want I don't know that's kind of nice it's really up to you so let's go ahead and select our camera maybe can get back a bit to something like this see maybe go ahead and um, take another render and see what we're gonna get this time so let's go ahead and render it again okay folks th that is definitely not too bad maybe we can go ahead and increase the effect of our Sun by increasing its intensity and make it a bit more uh, you know effective or we can go to our uh, color mapping and basically increase the burn value to get some uh, contrast in here but let's go ahead and I'm going to enable my uh, mug back again okay and I'm going to my uh, color mapping here and just going to increase this wallet to something like maybe point uh, let's go to point six and see what's gonna happen and the next thing I'm going to uh, start rendering out some test renders to my picture viewer so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reduce this size to something like 750 and uh, for the moment just to get the uh, things a bit uh, quicker 
we can go ahead go to your rear bridge options and uh, just disable the displacement so the render will happen without any displacement map uh, now we can go ahead and see uh, take a test render and see what the lighting and the general situation is and then we can come back and hopefully uh, see uh, if there is any uh, change we need to uh, you know kind of make it so let's go ahead and take a render okay guys so the render is finished and uh, it's very nice you can see this uh, it's, um, this liquid I really like the material even without any displacement map it's really nice and cool uh, in order to kind of pop the glass out a bit more we can go ahead and just use a simple glass without any sort of uh, blurs it would be kind of a bit more visible in our scene and maybe somehow uh, nicer so let's go ahead and uh, do that uh, uh, and we decide whether we're going to be using this frosty material or just a simple material so I'm going to go ahead and create a, a simple very advanced material again I'm going to enable the refraction I'm going to enable my specular and I'm going to just to maybe something like 0.97 and the same thing for my uh, specular layer here something like this and uh, we can go ahead and add a maybe uh, just a noise here to add a bit more imperfection let's go to something like 400 and change the effect to something like uh, 0.1 or 0.2 and let's uh, go ahead and apply this material to our mug so let's go ahead and apply this material and let's uh, go ahead and uh, take another render and see what's going to happen and another thing we can do uh, the area light that we have is going to be just affecting the mesh but we can go ahead and actually add these mug so it uh, so uh, the reflection that area light causes uh, make uh, the definitely going to make our glass maybe nicer so let's go ahead and actually add this uh, sorry this um, HQ mug to our area light include list now let's go ahead and take another render and see what's gonna happen okay folks there we go as you can see I don't know it's really up to you I don't think it really makes a lot of difference but uh, I think in this one we get uh, see this uh, nice uh, highlights up here if you take a look so let's go ahead and see what we are gonna be uh, doing I'm gonna go ahead and close this guys for the moment uh, I'm going definitely I like how the uh, material looked without any displacement maps so I'm going to my displacement map and reduce the amount from four centimeter to something like two centimeters so it's not gonna affect the surface that much and let's go ahead and add a bit more detail I'm going to apply uh, just delete this uh, simple glass material and just we're gonna be using this uh, more complex frosty sort of look glass material okay uh, so the next thing we can come back here maybe to a scene to something like this maybe so it's not that wild okay but maybe we can go ahead and render this and it will look nice okay so the other thing I'm going to do is to kind of um, move these texture that we apply to this wood a bit so let me go ahead and uh, let's see what you can do here just I want to see this portion a bit better something like this I think it's gonna be enough okay maybe a bit more that's great I'm going to disable this axis and we got our let's go and make sure our displacement is turned on I'm going to basically prepare my scene to the final render so let's go ahead and uh, definitely increase the global illumination settings a bit I'm going to just maybe negative 3 and negative 1 here I'm going to my light cache so let's go ahead and go to something like 1000 not that high because I wanna make sure it's gonna be a bit quick and then let's go to our uh, anti-aliasing I'm going to increase my maximum subdivision to something like 16 maybe I'm going to my DMC sampler and go to my noise threshold maybe to something like 
0, 7. Then I'm going to my global subdiv multiplier and increase it to something like 2. And uh, I think we are good here. Okay, perfect. And uh, let's go ahead and maybe let's go 1280 by 720. And we are basically done. We can clump the output here a bit. Uh, as I said, make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Vray for Cinema 4D at mographplus.com. We go over all of the settings in quite a lot of detail, and I'm just trying to see what we need to change before we go to the final render. So that's good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, basically uh, start the render and see what we're going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and render the scene. And when it's done, I'm going to uh, get back to you and see whether there's going to be any change or uh, we can call it a day and uh, finish our project. So uh, see you after the render is finished. Okay, folks, the render is finished and it took about 34 minutes. And as you can see, we have this very nice render. I can go ahead and zoom in a bit. Just, uh, you can see, uh, we got this really nice and high quality frosty sort of glass. We got this nice liquid. And maybe this part, it's a bit too uh, kind of burned and we can uh, go ahead and reduce the burn value at our color mapping or we can do something about it in the post-production process in Photoshop. But generally speaking, we have this really nice render. I really like it. You can see we got very this very nice and uh, realistic uh, sort of wood. Uh, we got this nice frosty glass. We got this uh, kind of um, uh, liquid, uh, which is we kind of try to make it uh, our own type of liquid uh, by adding different effects and different uh, you know, a uh, way of, of making it look like a, a thick liquid. Uh, also, uh, if you uh, come to our website at mographplus.com, uh, we uh, just added a new series of tutorial, the Cubicle Project. If you go ahead and check it out, we are going to be creating a very nice and advanced 3D motion graphics from scratch in Cinema 4D. So, And also, we have this comprehensive introduction to V-Ray for Cinema 4D. So if you really want to get started in uh, V-Ray for C4D and re you are really serious about V-Ray for C4D, I highly recommend this comprehensive introduction to V-Ray for Cinema 4D at MoGraph+. Plus. Dot com. Uh, it's a very uh, kind of a comprehensive tutorial. It's about eight hour of video content, uh, about 45, I think, of uh, lessons. And we go through Vray for Cinema 4D from the very basics and we talk you through everything you need to know in Vray for Cinema 4D. It's a great course and I uh, highly recommend that you go ahead and check it out. Okay, folks, so that was it, and I hope you liked it. We've been through a lot, lighting, texturing, rendering, and I hope you liked it. If you have any question, uh, you can go ahead and drop a comment down this video at Vimeo or at my web at our website, mographplus.com, uh, and I will be including the project file to this uh, lesson, so uh, you can go to our website, mographplus.com, in free tutorials, and find this tutorial, which is going to be the newest one at the moment, and uh, you can go ahead and download the uh, project file so you can uh, kind of walk yourselves through the uh, tutorials and what you've learned. So uh, see you in the next tutorial. It was Khazri from mographplus.com. So see you soon.